person that thinks they know what they're talking about and it will cause the person that may know what they're talking about to push a little harder and it's a dangerous thing because all it's doing is ushering the presence of the devil that's why praise and worship is very important because praise and worship ushers the spirit of god when you're in here when everybody is just thanking god for sparing their lives and putting food on a table and healing them from cancers and different sicknesses and saving their children and all these different things we have um, reason to give God glory for it ushers the presence of God in and it makes us all fall in love with God together and we grow as a loving group of people that recognize who God is and what he has done in our life when you debate the Bible it has nothing to do with worship if you read your Bible the Pharisees were trying to debate Jesus and they got mad every time Jesus would not debate with them about certain things. He would, Jesus would just say a simple thing and, and they'll be mad about it. They got so mad that they could not debate with him that they actually set him up to get him killed. So this lets us know that debating the Bible and debating religions and debating what color Jesus was and where exactly he was at in, in this year and that all of that stuff. Is not going to get you in heaven. The Bible teaches us to follow the ways of Jesus Christ, repent of our sins, and we will go to heaven. It didn't say nowhere in the Bible, whoever knows the most scriptures the most and know them by heart is going to heaven. There's nowhere in the Bible that says if you know the word of God by heart, you're going to heaven. The devil knows the word of God by heart better than every human being on this planet. The devil knows the Bible more than anybody so it's not about just knowing the bible a lot of people get so caught up in that right there i've been studying my word i know this word so i'm better than everybody else and that's not true there's a difference between there's a difference from knowing the bible and living the bible you can know the bible and not live the bible there's so many people right here on this app you could you could stroll go to a couple of rooms it's people in there right now arguing and they both got the same Bible out. And they in there arguing back and forth with each other and both got the same Bible out. So this lets you know, there's some people that think they're all good because they know the Bible, but they don't live it. That's why you, when you go into these panels, you don't see nobody worshiping God. You don't see nobody praising God you don't see nobody speaking in tongues you don't see nobody being delivered you don't see none of that you just see a bunch of people that know the Bible going back and forth with each other because they have turned the word of God into a piece of content to cause disruption everybody knows that people are nosy they love mess so what better way to do it the Satan gave these people an idea to get up on panels and create mess amongst each other and their rooms are packed with a bunch of confused people that are picking sides and believing the side that sounds better to them where is the worshipers where are the praisers I went in the room today and said Holy Spirit room was it nothing even pointing towards Holy Spirit, anything when I went in there? I'm not judging, but people need to stop playing with God. I, I think they think it's a joke or a game or they feel like they get some kind of brownie points from God because they know the Bible. You know the Bible, but why aren't you worshiping God? Why is it that you can quote all the scriptures, cross-examine people that don't really know what they're talking about, and quote all these different, but nobody is crying out to the Lord. Ain't nobody coming back to your, ta uh, your, your panels with a testimony. Nothing. It's just a bunch of people fighting with each other, thinking they right because they know what a Bible scripture says by heart. The Bible clearly tells us that God will use the foolishness of the preacher. God will use the foolish things to confound the wise and the weak things to confound the strong. Because God is saying, no matter how wise you are, 
It ain't about your wisdom. It's about the wisdom of God. No matter how smart you think you are, it's not about your smartness. It's about what God is doing. A lot of people are playing because, and they're deceiving themselves because they know the Bible by heart, but don't live the Bible by heart. Ooh, that was good. They don't live the Bible by heart. Everybody is competing, combating, fighting. Well, my opinion, I feel in this, let me read this one quick scripture before we get into this. This one quick scripture. Where is it? I just want to show you something. It's just, I got a, I got a little scripture I'm going to read, though, uh, a little later. But I just want to read this. I know it by heart, but let me just read it. Somebody just got to read it. Amen. Just got to go on and open it up and read it. Um, And it actually is the third. Today's the third, am I right? What's going on, Walk by Word? Y'all just in here talking about people uh, debating the Bible and stuff like that and think because they know the Bible, they got grounds to argue back and forth with people. Now, today is the third, so you know what Proverbs chapter 3 say. Proverbs chapter 3, and today is the fifth month, so what's the fifth verse? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your path. The interesting one is seven. Watch what seven says. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Don't what got me is this right here. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. <laughs> Fear the Lord and turn away. Hey, bro, my religion is Muslim, but you telling so good things. I can see the purity in your heart. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Um, but yes, yeah, so many people have turned debating religion and debating the bible they have turned that into a piece of content you see i look there's people that i follow on youtube and it's to the point where i kind of want to unfollow them because all they do is go around looking in other churches and using what people are doing in their other churches as his primary content instead of building the people up now don't get me wrong there's some craziness going on out here in these churches don't get me wrong but there's other things than trying to prove somebody is doing something wrong in their church. Our job is to get the, 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 the people that's lost to find Christ. How can a person find Christ if, you're, if you have a Bible out and you're debating with another person about scriptures in the Bible? How is that helping someone that's lost, that needs to believe in Jesus, that needs to come to repentance, that needs to give their lives to Christ? How is that helping them? It's not. It's people being fascinated with their own wisdom. And the Lord says, turn away from, turn away from it. It's evil. Oh, tomorrow when I go online, watch when so-and-so come in. I got a scripture that's going to get them. Why are we doing that? That's causing division in the body. This is what the Pharisees was trying to do with Jesus. They was trying to use scripture to, to come at Jesus and Jesus was the word. We got to be very careful. So I just want, you know, even though I went, I've been on for my last three days online, I've been on a little rant, you know, so y'all just got to just let me do what I'm doing and we're going to be back to regularly scheduled programming. But be careful because now when it comes to the things of God, According to this, this app, the rooms are filled with debaters. They put these catchy little clickbait titles, Holy Spirit room, God is love. And then you click it and you go in there and there's a bunch of people arguing at the top of their lungs and getting muted. And let this one speak. Let that person speak now. Okay. Now let that person speak now. Okay. That's not ministry. That's not praise. That's not worship. That is debating, that is sowing 
discord is causing confusion it's murdering the witness it's stopping people from coming to god because they get so confused they just i don't i don't get this this is why i don't believe because see it's too much going on i can't and then they feel like they're doing the right thing by rejecting jesus because how the people on here are are are, are um displaying him supposedly so it makes a person that don't know god or that don't know jesus back up like i oh, don't this is funny. Now it's turned into entertainment to them. So now you thinking that you have a room full of people that love God, but you actually have a room full of people that find entertainment in what you're doing. Man, you've been in that room with them. Them two people talking about they love God, but one they don't get along. It's dangerous. If they not worshiping God, if they not praising God, if they not trying to pray for your needs, if they not trying to uh, encourage you, if they not trying to lift you up, if they don't got a testimony, if they don't, if there's nothing that can help you overcome your what you're going through, get out of there. The enemy knows what he's doing. The enemy is behind all of those panels. He's behind all of those rooms. I don't care how much these people got holding Bibles in their hand and think they're doing the right thing. The devil is behind the whole thing because people are arguing and debating and challenging. And I seen something on TV. I guess it, this was a, a thing on TV. It was a, some great debate between Christians and Muslims. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Bottom line, if nobody wants to receive that, that's your business. If, if, if you don't like what we're saying about Jesus being the only way, no one's locking you in the room. You can say, I don't believe that. I don't receive that. And I'm out. Just like if I come to anybody's panel and they talking about something other than Jesus, I'm out of there. I never go. Even if people are wrong, I never try to go up on their panels and correct them. That Hey, that's what you do. That's the choice you chose to make. We already told you what Jesus can do. You don't want that. I'm out. And it, 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 whatever you're talking about, I'm out. I don't want to hear that either. I don't need it in my spirit. I don't because everything is about seeds. You have to be very careful. Every time a person is talking, they're throwing seeds out there in hopes to 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 bury themselves into your fertile heart that has received Jesus already. Your heart is still fertile. When when you have a fertile heart that has received Jesus, your heart is still fertile. That's why you have to go, go into your word and learn more about the Lord to help you stay grounded and rooted in Jesus. Because that, fer that fertile heart, if it, don't, if it don't know Jesus enough, somebody can say something else and something else will start growing in that same heart where Jesus was trying to, where Jesus was growing. Well, I like the way that this person said, well, I, I don't see what's wrong with crystals. They just, God created them. So you doing, you know, you know, that them kind of people be, be very be very careful but you know i just want to you know i just want to i know i probably don't owe nobody an apology or nothing like that but you know i let that go on in my life for six hours last night and the lord said let it pay attention to what's going on and you know i learned so much from it i learned so much from it um and that type of thing because sometimes people they don't want to they don't want to rip themselves from the world they want the world and god and they don't understand that it's either or you're gonna either have the world or you're gonna have god and a lot of people are trying to find some kind of because you know we live in that we live in today's culture is acceptance and and um what's the other word that they use tolerance and all these type of things so we're trying to use that same cultural idea when it comes to god yeah, we gotta be we gotta be tolerant and accept it. The Bible tells us to resist the devil. Corinthians tells us to watch out for the devil and his devices. So ain't no ain't no uh acceptance and and and, and tolerance when it comes to trying to mix things with God. We got to be accepting to people. We have to be tolerant to people because the Bible even tells I said this yesterday, the Bible tells us to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove meaning you got to let these uneducated goofies that's lost in the world you have to let them be around you can't just cut them off and just you have to 
be wise like okay this person okay lord what what do you have for me to help this person if god say help him help him if god say don't help him go on about your business but get out of your own understanding because when you go into your own understanding you'll find yourself just well it's the right thing to do it's i'm being nice and and you know and then next thing you know you didn't you didn't put uh you didn't, there's a fly in the ointment. You didn't put water in the oil. You're mixing up the anointing with the world and messing up what God is trying to really do. You know, so when it comes to the things of Jesus, we have to preach the things of Jesus with, with no adjectives. We don't got to do, I was talking to my mom earlier today and I was saying it's just crazy how the church is trying to find creative ways to reach the world. So now the church is starting to look like the world. Let me go get a bunch of face piercings and a face tat. And then I know they might, they might accept me then. Oh, let me put some lipstick on real quick and wear a rainbow hoodie. I'm not gay, but I'm just trying to reach the gay community. Or let me put on like the church is just, they, they forgot about the power of Jesus. You know, God says something to me and I, I'm saying this today. Dubbed, copywritten by me on, on what time is it? 9.08 on May the 3rd. I came up, the Lord gave me this. He said, people are suffering with an identity crisis instead of letting their identity be what Christ is. You get that? So now I'm going to make a shirt called uh, Identity Christ is, is, is greater with a little greater than identity crisis. The world is going through an identity crisis because they don't know who the identity Christ is. They don't know who they are. That's why they need prayer every day. That's why they scared every day. That's why they need you to say something to encourage them because they don't know who they are in Christ. They've lost their identity and they're starting to identify with the. See, I done started preaching into my message, y'all, but I'm going to cut it right there. But they starting to identify with the world. And they done got so, it's just like, it's just like when you take everything from the world and say you're just putting it all on you. You're taking all these things from everything that the world doing and you're putting it all on you. After you get done putting everything the world has to offer on your face, when you go look in the mirror, you don't even recognize who you are. Because you've covered up the true who you are with what the world wants you to be. Everybody wants to be accepted. Everybody wants to be left out. I mean, don't want to be left out. I'm just doing this because I don't want people looking down on me. I'm just doing this because this is trending. The This is the new thing. Jesus is, listen, Jesus is the only thing that should be trending. Why are we trying to add spices and herbs and all these different things to Jesus? He don't need none of that. The pureness of Jesus Christ alone will will radiate through who you are and you will attract people to Christ. But if you keep letting the devil tell you 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 ain't this, you ain't that, you 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 worth you start listening to everything Satan's saying, you start trying to make up for everything that he's saying about you. You ugly. Oh, let me put some more makeup on. You too fat. Oh, let me lose weight. You this. Oh, let me do everything the devil say to you. You start trying to accommodate it to shut him up. Now you done transform from what Christ said you was to what the devil tricked you into thinking you was. Woo, this is too much. This is too much. Jesus, 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 Jesus. <sighs> Listen, y'all pray for me. But, um, you know, just back on just a little bit about back on yesterday. I just I just wanted to come to the people and just apologize personally if I was y'all know my passion. Y'all know how I am when it comes to uh, talking about God and, and people that are lost and are really trying to sound, um, you know, educated about it. And and what's that woke? The woke community, the woke community is killing everybody. I better get away from these woke folk. They killing y'all. But, you know, so, you know, I, I got a little um, a little um, passionate yesterday. You know, I ain't call young brother because the Lord told me, give us some time, fill it out, you know, because, you know, we went in prayer for the brother and then he switched names and came back as somebody else and a whole nother person like he was a whole different person. So, you know, the Lord shows me that this is why he don't want me doing debate panels, because what it does is it 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 it, it agitates the spirit of the enemy it stirs up the spirit of the enemy so while we're talking and trying to come to an agreement 
the engine of the devil was getting more and more powered up. You know, so those are dangerous panels. And the, and the enemy hates the way that we do things on our panel. The enemy hates that we spend two hours at least out of our day, Monday through Friday, worshiping God. Nobody, the Pope don't even do that. Nobody in the world is really, really is dedicating two hours at least a day. You know, people, I pray, I prayed, I read my Bible today, but two hours at least a day, five days a week of just glorifying, lifting up the Lord, worshiping the Lord, encouraging each other, sharing, you know, ministering to each other, all these different things. People not church don't church don't even do this. So, you know, the devil hates this. He hates it. He wants to shut it down. He wants to shut it down. Right. Ten minutes at most. You got some people came. They pray for five minutes and thought they was down there for 20 minutes. They look at the clock like, man, that was only five minutes. I done did it. So I know I'm telling the truth. I done got down there. I thought I was down there for at least an hour. I mean, it was a whole five minutes. But yeah, God bless y'all. I just wanted to let y'all know. Y'all know me. Y'all know how I am when it comes to these type of things. I don't want nobody to miss their opportunity um, of finding Christ. You know, and, and getting their life in order. And um, thanks, mom. Getting their life in order and coming to repentance and just giving their life back to Jesus. Because ultimately, that's the main and the, uh, the important thing about it. I'm going to go ahead and play a couple of songs. Then I'm going to read another. Uh, I got a scripture the Lord gave me. And I might touch on it a little bit. God was showing me something with this. And I believe it's going to help some people. Um, so, but if anybody want to come up, feel free to come up. I'm going to go ahead and open up the panel. It's muted, but. I'm, I'm Sister Honesty. Every time I hear that song, I get excited as well. That whole album is nice. Um, it's called Encounter. The album is called Encounter by Todd Galber. Um, powerful, man. That man is really anointed. I thank God for him. I thank God for us. God is so good. Um, I'm not going to be here long. That was Todd Galberth, uh, More Like You. I'm not going to be before you long. It's just God just dropped this little word in my spirit earlier today when I was um, straightening up my room. Um, I got this poster. I mean, this picture hanging up in my room um, and it's, it's a scripture. It's uh, Isaiah 41 and 10. And when I read it, I said it, 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 I see it every day in my room. I read it every day in my room and it didn't hit me until today. It's it just like, boom. And God told me, he said, now go get your Bible and read it and continue to read it until I tell you to stop. So, you know, I just want to, I just want to read Isaiah 41 and 10 through 13. Um, you know, some of us, you know, I believe this scripture, this is a scripture we want to write down somewhere and, you know, or keep it, keep a, keep a card or something in that, in the Bible on that scripture. Come on, Cece. <laughs> Keep it on that scripture. Thank you, sis. Keep it on that scripture because it's it's a very encouraging scripture. And sometimes we forget, you know, who God is in our life and what he said he will do for us. So this is uh, God's help for Israel. You know, you can apply this to yourself. It's Isaiah 41, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 to 13. And it, I'm reading the new, the new Living Translation, uh, the NLT, Isaiah 41 and 10. And it says, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will give you strength. I will give strength. Well, I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious hand. Here, take it and go. I will hold you up with my victorious hand. See all your angry enemies lie there, confused and humiliated. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. You will look in vain for those who tried to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. For I hold you by your hand, I hold you by your right hand, I the Lord your God, and I say to you, 
Don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Okay. So when I read this, I said, what are you saying, God? And the Lord clearly said to me, people, no, Isaiah 41 and 10, people worry more about fear than what God actually said he will do for them. You know, people get so caught up in what's going on instead of remembering what God said he will do for them. This scripture clearly highlights that no matter what attacks come against you, no matter what turmoil comes against you, no matter what people try to say against you, no matter what people try to do to you, God will come to your rescue. But a lot of times I believe people miss it because they get focused on what people are doing to them. Oh, they talking behind my back. Oh, they reminded me of my past. Oh, they still trying to disrespect me. Instead of going into this scripture, this is why I said take this scripture and lock it in your wallet somewhere and pull it out whenever you need to because there are promises in this thing. God says right here in the very first verse, I mean in the very first uh, part of the scripture, chapter 10, I mean verse 10, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious hand. The Lord says, don't be afraid. So what does this mean? Soon as something comes and tries to scare you, apply that very first line. Don't be afraid. Okay, well, I'm not scared. Now what, God? I am here with you. Okay, I'm comfortable. I will strengthen you. Okay, I feel a little stronger. I will hold you up with my right hand. God is saying, if you believe this, what are you scared of? Have you ever ran into those people? You can minister to them all day and they still, but, but, but you don't get it, but you don't understand, but you don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know where I've come from. Well, obviously you don't believe in this scripture. When God, when, when we say to believe in God, when the Lord tells us to believe in him, we have to believe in him. We sometimes doubt God and don't even know that we're doubting him because we get worried about the situation that we're in right now. Oh, my God. And this, isn't it interesting that as soon as you remember God, everything works for you. If you do not let yourself get caught up in the situation and remember who God is and what God has promised and what he said about your life, no matter what you what situation you're in the lord will see you through no matter how impossible it looks no matter how dire it is no matter how dangerous it is no matter what's going on around you as soon as you put your mind on god and remember that he said don't be afraid for i am with you don't be discouraged this means don't like sometimes oh man i knew this wasn't gonna work god don't want us doing none of that he don't, listen god don't care how crazy the situation looks he don't want you to budge. The reason why is because he's trying to show you something. If you worried about the things that's going on, you'll miss what God is trying to show you. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 11, he says, see all your angry enemies lie there, confused and humiliated. God is showing you, he said, everybody that hate on you, everybody that don't like you, Everybody that came against you, everybody that's trying to give you a hard time, everybody that's talking behind your back, everybody that keeps disrespecting you, everybody that don't see your worth, they're going to sit there angry and confused and humiliated while they think that they got you feeling angry, confused and humiliated. God turns it around, lifts you up with his right hand, make sure you look like what he promised you to look like and they look stupid. People better be careful who they messing with. It goes back to what I was saying earlier about this identity crisis. Some of us are going through an identity crisis instead of knowing the identity Christ is. Did y'all get that? If you know who you are in Christ, you won't be going through no identity crisis. You won't be fearing God. Jesus ain't scared of nothing. God ain't. God fears nobody. God gave us the same spirit. Why do we have fear? If there's fear there, identity crisis, you don't trust the words of God. He told you, he said, he will leave your enemies looking humiliated and confused. But you will never get to see that if you fear. 
You will never get to see that if you don't trust. You will never get to see that if you don't believe. God has given us steps. He said, fear not, be not discouraged. This means get right, don't be afraid, and watch what I'm about to do. Don't give up on yourself, even if everybody else then gave up on you. You don't give up on yourself because I am your God and I got your back is basically what he is saying in the scripture. Now watch this. This is the part right here. I was like, ooh, because we don't we don't wish we don't wish death on nobody. You know, you do got some you do got some saints out there that just want to pull down every angel from heaven and just launch them straight at your house and kill everybody in the whole house. No, we don't want that. We 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 hope that you come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, repent and get your life together. But God said right here in his word, he said, he said, um, you will look in vain for those who try to conquer you, those who attack you, meaning the people that's been trying to attack you, that's been messing with you, you know, you know, have you ever been bullied or was a bully when you was younger? Every day at school, you do the same thing to that same person or every day at school, that same person do that same thing to you. God said, you're going to be looking in vain for him, meaning that's not going to be there. So when you, for instance, you get up, you go to school. Oh my God, I got to deal with big Leroy. Here he come. Wait, where Leroy at? Hold on. See that what I'm doing right there? That's looking in vain. You're looking for something that ain't there no more. And we have to be very careful. The Bible is telling us right there in, in um, verse 12. You're going to look in vain for those that try to conquer you. We have to stop doing that, expecting people to treat us a certain way. Oh, I know. I already know. As soon as they see me, they're going to start talking about my weight. I already know. As soon as they see me, they're going to start calling me ugly. Or, like, we got to stop expecting people to do that and start depending on what the Lord said in Isaiah 41 and 11. God got us, y'all. Look, so it goes on to say this. Now, watch this. This is the one I was talking about. Verse 13 says, for I hold you. No, 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 no. Let me go back. It says, you will look in vain for those who try to conquer you. Those who try, those who attack you will come to nothing. Everything they was doing is, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. But we can't take matters into our own hands. In order for this to happen, you have to fear not and trust in the Lord. Don't be discouraged. Let the Lord do it. He said he will lift you up with his right hand. That's all we trying to do. We try, Lord, I need you to move on my behalf. Lord, I need you to grab me right now before I grab somebody. Lord, I need you to move because I don't want to do nothing wrong out of my own anger. The Lord says right here in verse 13, he says, for I hold you by your hand, I, the Lord, your God. And I say to you, don't be afraid. He says, don't be afraid. I am here. I mean, don't worry. I just lost myself. I'm sorry. He says, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Now, there is a part of this scripture that hit me. And I was like, Lord, I don't want you to. Uh, I don't want you to do nothing to no people. But he says in verse 11, see all your see all your angry enemies will lie there confused and humiliated. Anyone who opposes you will die. So I said, Lord, you ain't got to kill him. And the Lord broke it down to me, said, no, it ain't just a physical death. Things around these people that bother you will start to die. Careers will start to die. Doors will start closing. Relationships will stop working. All these different things and these people that think they better than you or that keeps attacking you or keeps trying to come against you. Everything in their life will start to deteriorate because they messing with you. You ain't got to wish bad on nobody. All you got to do is just get closer to God. The more the enemy tries to get you out your character. Lord, Lord, I'm trying not to cuss these folk out and just stay with God. Lord, you told me don't fear. They coming for me. I don't know if they're going to jump me. I don't know if they're going to shoot me. I don't know if they're trying to stop my financial flow. I don't know if they're trying to break up my happy home. I don't know what they're trying to do, but I'm not going to fear. I'm coming to you. And the Lord says, when you come to me, I will fight your battle. A lot of times I believe we forget who we are in Christ and how precious we are to God. You ain't got to do nothing to nobody. All you got to do is trust God and he'll start doing it. You know, I heard somebody say, I heard a pastor say, I'd rather be in the hands of an angry devil than in the hands of an angry God. Because the devil can the devil can only do so much. God can put an end to everything. So People better watch out who they messing with. 
instead of worrying about what people say, I hear a lot of people, you know, they come to me a lot, man, can you pray for me for this, man, these people, you know, it's always something somebody else is doing. And I'm here to encourage you to fear not. Put it in the hands of God. And this is, the, this is what makes the thing work. Your faith and your patience. People don't like that P word. That P word, woo, patience. Mm -mm. Not, in, not in 2023 where everything is fast. You can push a button, it pop up. You can cook your food in the air fryer in five minutes and it tastes like grandma's three hour roast. So everybody wants their stuff fast. So when God tells us to be patient, it do something to us. But how bad do you want it? How much do you love the Lord? Are you willing to wait until he move? Because when he move, it's the move that needs to be made. When you move, you might make the wrong one. You, you see what I'm saying? You might find yourself having to go repent. You might find yourself having to rededicate your life. You might find yourself having to ask the Lord to wash your mouth out with some soap. You might end up having to ask the Lord. to. It's just it's just too much, um, too much conviction when you try to move on your own. Oh, I hope God ain't mad at me for doing that. Oh, I hope God ain't upset at me for thinking like that. Well, just give it to God. If you really believe God like you say you do, why are we not giving these issues to God? Why do we say stuff like the Lord? I'm sorry, but the Lord going to have to just he going to just have to whoop me because why do we do stuff like that? Why do we play with God like that and put God on the back burner and try to take care of the matter ourselves? We want to keep going up with God. So in order to keep going up and staying in his good graces, we got to act like little bitty babies and give everything to him. I don't care how crazy the situation is or how light the situation is. Lord, they're getting on my nerve. They take it too long bringing my tacos out. Give whatever. Just give it to Jesus. But don't cuss the, 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 the person out behind the, the uh, register because they're taking too long with your tacos. Have patience. Be comfortable in God. Sometimes we treat God like he's irritating to us. Uh -uh. Why can't we need patience? We need patience. The Lord tells us to fear not. He tells us to fear not. He tells us right here to don't. And the Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing. Sometimes we get a word from the Lord and the Lord will say, I didn't tell you to say nothing. And we jump up. We tell him everybody we see. Who God told me to say this. Who God told me to say this. Ooh, God. Be patient. Just be patient the lord is really tugging on us with this patient stuff when you don't have no patience you don't see the manifestation of god and then when things come you think you had something to do with it instead of just waiting on the lord it's okay sometimes people will flip the script script on you faith without works is dead that don't just because you being patient don't mean you're not working just because you being patient don't mean you're not trying to um Push for the thing that God wants for you. But there are some things that God wants to give to you in his timing, not your timing. Because when he gives it to you, I, what I've noticed, when God gives you things in his timing, it lasts longer. When you get things, when you go get things in your timing, it goes just as fast as you went for it. But when God gives it to you, it sustains you. Everything that God has blessed us with is still there unless he told us to give it to somebody else. Everything that God has done for us is still there. But some of the stuff we done done for ourselves, we it's probably gone. We don't even <laughs> It's like it's like when somebody give you a car and when you buy a car on your own, when you buy it on your own, you take better care of it. But when somebody get you one, you just you just treat it all any old kind of way cuz you didn't put no money into it. Or when somebody give you some clothes or some money or something of value, when they give it to you, you don't treat it good. But when God give us some stuff, it stays. It's the, it's the opposite way. When God gives us some stuff, it stays. When we go get it ourselves, we ruin it because it wasn't from God. But the Lord just wants, I just want to share this because the Lord doesn't want us to be afraid and be discouraged. He wants us to allow him to fight for us. We keep, we keep trying to take on these battles head on and it's not for us. This, some of the stuff we going through is not, uh, most of this stuff, I'm gonna just keep it real. Most of the stuff we going through is not even for us to fight. Do you know when you put it in God's hand, it help your enemy believe in God? When you put it in your hands, it make your enemy stop liking you even more. Now they got to go back to headquarters and try to figure out another way to beat you. But when you let God do it, that same enemy end up finding that same God that you got. But we got to stop trying to retaliate. I understand we can show them we big, we bad, we tough. But if that's still in us, we need some deliverance. If we still want to show somebody we can fight, you need to be delivered. 
If you still can cuss a person out better than two pirates in the back of a pirate ship, you need to be delivered. God's supposed to strip that from us. I thought I thought he took them things from us. He wants us to go to him. That's how much he loves us. Just like how when your kid get into it. I see it. I see it in, in today's time. Sometimes these kids be getting bullied at school and the mamas and the daddies want to go fight the kid. That's a kid, but God want to, he want to move on our behalf. That's how that same feeling you feel for your uh, children. That's how God feels for us. When you, when your kid try to go fight his own battle and get beat up and don't say nothing or, or your kid's getting picked on or your kid's being bullied and he doesn't say anything to you. The first thing you say after that season of bully, why you didn't say nothing to me? Why you didn't tell me? Why you didn't call me? Why you didn't let me know that this was going on with you? That's what God is saying right here. Fear not. Don't be worried. I am your God. I got you. Tell me. Watch what I do. I'll destroy every assignment that was launched at you. I'll dismantle every attack that has been built up in front of you. There's no wall that can stop you. There's no blow that the devil can throw to knock you off your square if you give it to God. The only time the devil get to knocking us off our square is when we pay attention to the blows that the devil throwing instead of going to God for help. Lord, the enemy is attacking right now. I don't know what he up to. I don't care what he up to. You told me all I got to do is come to you. You're going to fight my battles. All I got to do is hold my peace. Amen. So, you know, I just wanted to share that. I, I just felt like it could help somebody just to know that God is with you. Don't be afraid. No matter what is coming your way, no matter what attack is lined up at you, no matter what type of hurtful words are being said about you or to you, no matter what type of threats people are making, no matter who don't like you, who not letting you into the in crowd, who not letting you sit at the table with the cool kids, none of that matters. Jesus is the coolest thing ever. All you got to do is go straight to him. Be in the building. What's up, brother? All you got to do is go straight to him. I don't know who tried to make Jesus a cornball. He far from that. This is, what, this is what matters. These people out here chasing stuff that don't matter. Chasing the next trend. Chasing the next vibe. Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And, and an everlasting source that will never run out. We don't need nothing else but Jesus. We go to him. He gives us the instructions to get the things that we need for ourselves. It's better to go through him. Amen. I know that's where I'm going. My frustrations kick in. I might whine and cry and complain to God, but not to people. I'm going straight to God. We got to be careful running run to other human beings with all our issues because they don't have the answers. All you got to do is go to the Lord, be patient, wait, watch him give you the answer. What, what, what? Come on. Come on. Watch him give you the answer. Sometimes, you know, we go to five and six different people here. Juju. We go to five and six different people and confusion takes place. We start trying to take this person's advice and that person's advice. And it sounds good. Don't get me wrong. Some of the stuff people say sound good, but is it for you? Why we keep thinking God don't got the answers? I'm, 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 no, I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go to Brother Joe, man. He, 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 a uh, motivational speaker. He get paid for this. And then I had you sitting somewhere, millions and millions of feet away from the Lord, instead of just going to God. I'm a living witness. He might not answer me when I want him to. But I always get my answers 100%. And I'm pretty sure every blood wash believer in, his, in this room right now, every, ans every question you, has, you have asked God, he has given you the answer to. The kicker is, are you listening? Because God be saying some stuff that we don't want to hear. But it's good for us. God be telling us to leave some people alone. But it's good for us. They might be the coolest people you ever came across. They they looking out for you. They when you need something, they got it. When you're hungry, they feed you. All these things. But God might be saying, leave some people alone. We only want to listen to God when it fits our agenda. We only want to listen to God when it makes sense according to how we try to play it out. No matter what it is, if God told you to do it, 
Listen, because you, you're going to look back on those things like I'm so glad that I listened to the Lord. But what am I saying? Ultimately, wrap yourself in God no matter what. When you're scared, the Lord told you to fear not. When you're feeling discouraged, the Lord said, be not discouraged. I'm here with you. You have to believe. I'm, I'm going to read it one more time. And, and when I read it this time, tell yourself, I believe that. Everything that God says in the scripture, tell yourself, I believe that and apply it to your life and when you do that once it gets in you you will start looking at it different sometimes the word we'll listen to the word of god or we'll read the bible but we don't we we just take it at face value we don't really go in there and say no i really believe this right here what god said he told me to fear not well i ain't scared you know we be thinking i used to say this a lot i haven't said it in a while but we be thinking we doing it for God. Like, I don't want, like God can mess up. I'm doing it like this because I don't want God to be wrong. Who are we? I, I, I don't, I'm going to just move this type of way because I know the Lord promised me this, but I don't want him to be wrong about it. So you move a certain way and you mess up your whole, everything that God was finna promise you. It says right here, Isaiah 41 and 10. I'm going to read it again and we getting up out of here. Isaiah 41 and 10, it says, don't be afraid. I believe that. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. I believe that. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I believe that. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. I believe that. See all your angry enemies lie there, confused and humiliated. And anyone who opposes you will come to not, will Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. I believe that. You will look in vain for those who try to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. I believe that. For I, for I hold you in my right hand, I the Lord your God, and I say to you, be not afraid. I am here to help you. I believe that. Once you say, once you say you believe it, now God has to move on it. We all know that the, that the Lord can't lie. God can't lie. So if He said this to us, He means it. It isn't that God isn't coming, uh, isn't fighting on our behalf or coming through on our behalf. It's us not believing it. It's not God doing anything. It's us messing it up. God said, "I said what I said," and we're saying, "Well." I know you said that, God, but they right here in my face right now. Where you at? God? We start, you know, believe it. I'm not worried about it. Come with whatever army you're going to come with. Watch what God do. And really believe it. Really mean it. Say it from your heart. Say it from your spirit. Say it from your belief in God. And watch what he do. I remember this, uh, this woman at my sister's job. She can't stand my sister. My sister ain't did nothing to this woman. She can't stand my sister. And there was this job opening for her, for my sister. But the woman was the one that gets her the job. I was reading Isaiah 41 and 10 to, through 13. Um, this woman that didn't like my sister uh, was basically the gatekeeper to my sister's promotion. And she, she would not... Um, give my sister that job. My sister been there eight years. This woman didn't like my sister so much. She gave the job to somebody else that just got there. My sister didn't trip. She trusted God, believed God and, um, you know, believed God was going to move on her behalf. And long story short, that woman ended up getting, that woman ended up getting moved to another position, moved to another building. And the woman that got the job wasn't able to, to do the job and they gave it to my sister but my sister didn't get mad she didn't cuss that woman out she didn't call her a hater she didn't say you trying to block my blessings she didn't she didn't do none of that she just believed what god what god was going to do it now from the carnal eye looking in the situation it might have looked like ain't no way that i'm getting that job somebody already got hired for it but god moved some things around and everybody won the woman didn't lose her job she got moved to a different position the person that couldn't do the job got demoted to the job she could do. And my sister ended up getting the job she wanted without fussing, murmuring, complaining, doubting, none of that. She just, I know you're going to do it, God. I don't know how you're going to do it, 
but I know you're going to do it. And we have to have that same type of faith. It's not for us to figure out how God's going to do it. It's for us to believe that he is going to do it. Amen. All we got to do is believe that he's going to do it. He going to make a way. You said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. And I believe that as such. And I'm leaving that right there. I'm not finna try. Well, how you going to do? You know, when we do that, we, 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 our, we, our imaginations, the Bible tells us to cast down them imaginations and bring them back to the uh, control of Christ. So when you're trying to figure out, you start confusing yourself. You got to be very careful and just say, you know what? I know God going to do it. I don't know how he going to do it. But I know he going to do it. He said he going to fight my battles. He said he'll make my enemy my footstool. What's a footstool? Something you step over? Something you can rest your foot on? Something that's right before you. If you want to kick back and be comfortable and kick your feet up on it, you can, you can use it to get higher. You know, something up there in that cabinet you want to reach, you step on that footstool, you can get up there. God said he'll make your enemies help you get higher. Amen. So, you know. Just keep trusting in God and fear not and be not discouraged. The Lord said he's there to help you. He's there to be with you in every situation. And if anybody, if anybody opposes you or come against you, just fall back into the words of God, the promises of God and let him work. Let him work. He'll start tearing some stuff up in people's life to where they come back. I don't, I'm sorry. Hey, whatever it is I did to you, uh, they'll start apologizing and running it back. I'm so sorry. You know, I didn't like you and I had this hate for you. And I just want to, I want to apologize because they trying to get their stuff put back together. God ain't no joke. Especially he definitely ain't no joke about his children. We ain't, we, we ain't scared of nothing. We don't fear nothing. We got the DNA of the father. God don't got a scary bone in his body. <laughs> so we shouldn't either. We shouldn't be worried about nothing. We should just be looking at every adversity and being excited about how God's going to get me through this. How is God? I know you're going to do it, Lord. Instead of, oh, man, that's it. It ran its course. This was a coincidence for 15 years of my life, and now it's over. None of this stuff is a coincidence. God got you right where he wants you. God is protecting you even if you feel like he's not. God is watching over you even if you think he's not. God is there even if you think he ain't. He's just, we just, he, he waiting for the right moment. You got to be patient in the Lord. Patience is a fruit. Pa uh, patience is a gift, a spiritual gift. Patience is, is uh, one of the fruits. Do we got it? I know it's I know it's hard, but that's something that it's it's a part of this whole walk. We got to be patient with people. We got to be patient for the things that God has for us. We got to be patient with just people's attitudes and dealing with different things. So just be patient and trust in God and believe in the things that God said He's going to do and watch Him do it. Amen. Amen, y'all.